Finally, some global warming stuff. This is everything I need to know about global warming I learned in econ grad school. Uh, so there actually is a fair amount of economics you can learn in grad school. For instance, William Nordhaus at Yale has a, a model of, called the Dynamic Integrated Model of Climate and the Economy, or the DICE model for short. A few years ago, he came up with a regional version of this called the Rice model. Uh, I think for obvious reasons, there is no local version of this model. Uh, I have my own model of climate in the economy. It is called the value-laden, assumption-laden, nicely intertemporal, largely linear approximation integrated model of climate in the economy, or the vanilla ice model. <laughs> the vanilla ice model has three components. Uh, it's got some empirics, some theory, and some policy. Let's start with the empirics. So the evidence of climate change is, uh, is everywhere. Here's earlier snow melt in Hubbard Brook in New Hampshire. The downward slope of these lines here indicate that as we go through uh, the 20th century, the spring snow melt is starting earlier every year. You see a similar pattern uh, with bird migrations in Oxfordshire in the UK, where again the downward slope indicates that bird migrations are happening earlier every year. I often give this talk to economists who don't care about snow melt or birds, and so uh, I tell them that you can see a similar trend in uh, something that they do care about, which is the start of the Christmas shopping season. And then I tell them as a warning that we have to do something about climate change because if this trend here continues, by 2048, the Christmas shopping season will actually start prior to the previous year's Christmas. <laughs> and then there's going to be macroeconomic devastation. Uh, that takes care of the empirics. Uh, the, the theory of the Middle Ice model actually goes back to this slide from earlier, right, where I showed you this footnote down here about trade making everyone worse off. So uh, the footnote is actually true. I'll talk you through it for a minute. Um, so here's an example of trade making everyone worse off. It's a real simple, made up economic example, but you'll bear with me, I hope. So imagine there are these three people, orange, pink, and blue. They all live in a small town. Small town has an air pollution problem, and uh, all these three people, they all have gadgets in their garage that they don't use. So now we're going to see some trades. Okay? First, orange is going to sell something to pink, in this case a lawnmower. They both get $100 in value from this trade. Orange from selling this lawnmower that was just sitting in her garage. Pink from getting to use this lawnmower. Okay, so they both get $100 in value. The trouble is, is that when pink uses this lawnmower, air pollution gets worse. And the air pollution, you can see faint outlines of it there, the air pollution sends, uh, creates asthma or things like this that actually have health impacts for everybody in the town. Not just orange and pink, but also blue to the tune of maybe $80 per person. Notice that orange and pink here still want to continue to trade. They both get $20 from the, they each get $20 from the trade. The impact on blue, what economists call an externality, right? They don't care about blue. So now we see another trade. Pink is going to sell something to blue, in this case a snowblower. They get $100 from that trade. Air pollution gets worse. $80 in additional health impacts for everybody. And then we complete the circle. Blue sells something to orange, a leaf blower. They get $100 in benefit from the trade. Air pollution gets still worse, an additional $80 in health impacts for everybody. And if you take these three trades together and you just add up any one of these columns here, you see that after those three trades together, everyone ends up at minus 40. So the idea here is that uh, sometimes when I tell audiences this, like at that point, their brains explode. <laughs> The point here is that each person's trades are individually rational, right? but all together they hurt everybody. Okay, so sometimes tragedy of the commons, prisoner's dilemma, are the kind of language that you hear about these sorts of examples. Uh, what is the connection to climate change here? Oh, we could like label the people, for instance. Um, <laughs> and you might see some, uh, uh, some connections there. Finally, let's talk about policy for a minute. I'll get on my high horse for a moment. Uh, hey, how about a carbon tax? Okay. Or using economic instruments uh, to protect the environment. So hopefully you've heard some of that and we'll continue to hear some of that over, uh, during the conference here. So you can use the revenue from a carbon tax to reduce existing taxes or to fund worthy programs. Um, and the basic idea here is that we should be taxing things that we want less of instead of taxing things that we want more of. So we want more investment, we want more uh, savings, um, we want more employment, so instead of taxing those things, we should be taxing pollution and resource consumption and things that we want less of. I've spent a modest amount of time trying to find an analogy to make it clear uh, 
how stupid our current tax system looks to, from a perspective of sort of environmental economics and public finance. And the best analogy I could came up, I came up with hit me when I was in, uh, I was in Oxford actually. Uh, after my show, I went to uh, I went to a pub with some of the folks who had come to the show. Uh, it was the pub. The pub had a big sign in the back that said, "On this spot, Bill Clinton did not inhale." <laughs> it was the pub where he didn't inhale, uh, and I had a I had a glass of Guinness. And so my analogy here is that uh, taxing the current tax system that we have, where we don't tax carbon, but we do tax all these other things that we like, is like someone offering you a Guinness and you pour it out on the carpet and then you go drink from the toilet bowl. <laughs> terrible, right? It's terrible. Okay, so uh, here's a vision for you. We could replace some or all of our existing taxes with a carbon tax.